fairly new HTML coming to it, so it's exciting. Anyway, so when I first started out, I did um, some Rails tutorials and everything, and what really stood out to every beginner is the scaffold tool, right? And then when you get into it a little bit more, everyone's like, all the pros are like, I never use a scaffold tool. Yeah, it's like horrible. Um, <laughs> cool. So, since we never should do code generators, I thought, <laughs> and it's called uh, Media Kitchen, and uh, I just found it like maybe three days ago, and uh, I just really, I just really liked it. So, uh, and everyone here is saying code generators are bad, 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 but I figured for this meeting. Um, there's probably a lot of beginners here. You know, a lot of people, I'm hearing on Twitter and everything that there's like first time coders ever come to Meteor um, because it's so easy to understand and everyone's coding that it's the future, so why not just learn it now, right? Um, and so like, why are there some good reasons to use a code generator? And these are the ones that I thought of for myself. Um, you know, when you're learning the framework, sometimes the most basic things aren't anywhere to be found online, or like the full picture. Sometimes there's like just fragments everywhere. And if you can have a generator, like generate out something that that's just like super basic crud, well then that's like a starting point. And that, that will really help you to improve upon, um, help you build a foundation. When you're bidding a project, wouldn't it be awesome to like go to a, a client and you're just like cashing things out, um, and you got this code generator just like going at it, and uh, at the end of the meeting you're like, hey, how does this look? And of course, it's not going to. The UI is not going to be perfect and all this stuff. But just getting the um, communicating that you understand what they're trying to communicate to you. Um, or as a programmer, you know, capturing an idea really quick. Um, and then, if you are going to use it as like a production um, starting point, uh, I would suggest that you like really know what this generator is doing, uh, the good stuff, the bad stuff, and everything, so that you are really comfortable. Um, working with it as a starting point for your production app. Uh, was there any other reasons that anyone else could think of using a generator? Does anyone here think I'm like wasting your time right now talking about generators? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I want to bid projects. All right. So, and here's the guy who created it. Um, he's somewhere on the other side of the world right now. And <laughs> he's going to be watching a video. <laughs> that his friend's videotaping right now, so everyone say hello to Qatar. Hello, hello Qatar. <laughs> Kitchen rocks. All right. And um, before, before we start off on this, um, here's some pluses and minuses of, of uh, Meteor Kitchen. Uh, it's not open source. It's closed source. It's written in C++. Um, it's a command line interface. <laughs> I, I, wanted my first, I wanted my first talk to be memorable. And so, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, who's that guy? I know that now. <laughs> so, um, but it doesn't really matter because what I want it for is to like pop out some meteor code that I like. And so I don't really care. Uh, one thing I do care about is if the developer is like responsive. And over the last three days, um, he's like answered, he's on the other side of the world, but he answers my GitHub issues like in 30 minutes. Does this guy ever sleep? But uh, I really like it, it, it works out fine. Um, I, I bugged him a lot about open sourcing it because even like basic stuff, I'm making an issue about it. And I'm like, man, I just want to do a pull request for you. And he's like, oh, I'm thinking about it. So if everyone bugs them, <laughs> you should pause the video right now. <laughs> if everyone bugs them, hopefully he'll open source it. I know that he wants to make a product out of this. He's going to make a GUI, um, an online uh, product for it. And that's great. I think that's awesome. Um, but right now it's a command line interface. Uh, other things to watch out for is he tries to um, follow the, the M. Uh, scaffolding tool by Invented Mind by Chris Mather. You guys familiar with that? So I used that before, but man, that generates a lot of folders. Holy cow, starting up a project, man, I don't want to be like hit, going through all these folders trying to figure out where the code's at. Um, 
But anyway, so that's one thing that I don't like. Some people might really like that though. And another one is that I just came across is he doesn't use methods um, when he's like writing to the database. And so there's a couple things you just gotta watch out for, but most of all, just getting started, it's really helpful. So let's like dive in to this a little bit. Do you get tests? Do you get tests too? No. <laughs> yes. You notice I, I said, you know, you really gotta know what you're doing to do it having be a production thing. Um, so what I'm gonna do here So what you do is, just yesterday, you were supposed to write everything in JSON. And uh, the curly brackets were making me mad. And so I was like, dude, we gotta figure out something else. We gotta like, make this modular or something like that. And he's like, hey, how about YAML? And like 15 minutes later, he's like, oh yeah, you know, go ahead and reinstall it. I got YAML for you. And um, it'll automatically compile the JSON. Um, and you gotta like install uh, NPM, uh, YAML to JSON parser. I couldn't get the parser to work on my machine. If maybe someone could help me after the meeting. So I'm gonna show you the YAML, and then I already parsed manually or uh, through another parser in the JSON, and then it goes from there. So I'm gonna show you. I got it broken up into four steps. Um, step one is with this code right here, we can. Uh, generate an application. It has um, a navigation bar on the top and it has two pages. It has a home page and an about page. And that's the only code that you need to do to do that. Um, when you run, when you go into your command line, you're gonna run Meteor Kitchen and I'm just gonna run the JSON that I have. You specify where your JSON, app, JSON file is where you want to save it. And just for those of you to see, this is the JSON. It's the exact same thing. Just a bunch of curly braces to make it go crazy. Um, and then let's see what happens with this. All right, so the generator is already done because I kind of cheated. I ran the generator before, and we'll walk through what it did here. Um, he goes out and he grabs packages. The cool thing is you can like tell tell it what packages you want to bring in already, and it will bring it in during the generator as well. Uh, it brings makes your structure, does your routing for you, um, makes the zones, the views, uh, brings it all together, and then it's finished. What it can do then? Let's fire it up. And let's hope that it works. So like that's not sexy at all. So let's like do something cool. Here. Um, when you want to go to the next step, how do you add like divs and certain different areas and special things? What he proposes is um, adding components. And on his website. He lists the components right here, and you can make, it's pretty easy to make your own components, which is great, because then um, you could uh, just kind of make your own code modular and start bringing custom stuff in. But right now, he has menus, <coughs> data views, which are really cool. We'll get into that in the last uh, half that I'll make. Jumbotron, Markdown, and Divs. And so right here, what I'm gonna show you guys on the uh, second step is with Jumbotron. Uh, basically, Pages um, uh, object, and then we got an array of pages right here. We got the home, and I just popped in this component, and uh, and then you can add 
just an array of components. I just added one in and uh, put the type in Jumbotron to just fill in what you want on here. Uh, this illustrates also how easy routing is, where you name your routes down here, and you can just like route right to it, and it will set everything up for you. So what we're going to do with this, is does anyone have questions? Going through it pretty quick, so I want to get to the sexy parts at the end. Mm -hmm. So for the routing part, does that let you tap into um, higher routers, controllers, and stuff like that, or is it like it, it creates weird? controllers, yep. And um, you can also, it, it's like pretty awesome with the route frames too. Mm -hmm. um, so like anything is possible with, with that. Uh, the question is, and this, this brings up, to your mind, something good. The question is, how much of your app do you want to write in YAML? You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like you're doing it. You can do it. You can get really detailed. But it's like, you're still like kind of, I got nervous because I'm not like in it. I'm not in the JavaScript. And um, so you can go way in depth. Uh, one issue though with it is with this generator, when you run it, it replaces the whole app. So say you want to change something. You want to add a page. And you're like, I'm going to add a page through Meteor Kitchen instead of adding it um, through my Meteor app. Uh, when you run the, the code generator again, it's going to save over your old Meteor app. In fact, it's going to give it a, a new Meteor app ID, and so your database is all new and everything, too. Um, and so any of, uh, if you if you edited your app folder, that's gone. So, so that's, that's a caveat to just know, like when to use a tool, when not to use a tool. Um, so what we're going to do here is fire up the Jumbotron. WebStorm. Who uses WebStorm here? Who doesn't like WebStorm here? <laughs> 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 I love it. It has everything I want in one screen. And uh, and they just came out with WebStorm 9. It has Meteor support in it uh, for Meteor uh, syntax highlighting and uh, finishing stuff. It's it's all right. They're pretty responsive with um, if you have any uh, requests for them, they change it up. They, they, they want to support this this group, uh, Meteor Ecosystem. <coughs> Boom, we got a jumbo turbo. Yeah, super easy with routing and the button and everything. So it's like, woo -hoo. Okay. okay, time to get like really sexy. Um, all this stuff is like good, what do you do? You can like whip that together like super fast. Um, but what, like, what about like authentication? Like, let's, let, let's add accounts, right? Um, so let me show you. It's like super easy with this. Uh, I'm just gonna highlight what I did here. I, okay, so all the gray areas. Um, in step two, he, has, he introduces this thing called zones. And this is called a free zone. And a free zone is, is just an app without authentication. If you wanna add authentication, there's no more free zone. Now you have public zone, and you have private zone. And the public zone is things that are only available to uh, people who are not logged in and also authenticated users. But everything that's in the private zone um, requires you to log in to get it. So that's how he separates it from you guys. And then uh, adding all the pages that you need for, for handling login and registration and for getting passwords and reset is like right here. This is all you gotta do to generate the views. Um, is make four four pages. Um, and this is how you do it. And he's calling out the template here. And pretty much you can go to uh, you can edit these HTML templates right in your root directory. So you can have it be any way you want. 
super simple though. Uh, in the menu bar, I went ahead and added uh, registration and login and items. <coughs> Totally. Okay, cool. And you know, this is a private view. So we'll just like show it like that. And all this stuff is going to be available on GitHub. Registration and login, and um, they have the pop ups and everything. You can start coding your own one in. There we go. And then this is a private, uh, home private. So this is just on the private back end. Get off, get the settings pages where you can change the password right here. And it's right now. Get off. So, go here. Password, you can start processing that. Um, instead of showing you, whoops. All that stuff is like totally cool and like fun like to do. Uh, what I really like is just getting like a CRUD app going. Um, say I want to make a back end really quick for an app that I'm making and the front end's like super cool and all that. This is where this really shines. <coughs> and you guys will be able to pull this on GitHub and, and see how little code this is. A whole new app. Um, it wrote over the original, so I got to go ahead and do this again. Cool. And now I, what we did here was just in a few lines of code, you have um, the whole CRUD operation here. I got customers. No customers here. Add a new customer. <coughs> I was just about to ask about the export function. Yeah, isn't that neat? Show what you got this. All right, so so you could so you have these built in. I never even heard of TSV. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Tabs. Tabs. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just thought that was great. Um, right there, I'm I'm actually building an enterprise app right now, and like one of their things was, yeah, we got to export it into Excel and like, play with it. I'll get to it sometime down the road. But now, hey, this has CSV right off the bat. It makes me look like I'm a better program. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it has search, uh, search built right in. Um, another great thing that I really like is like making forms. And say you want to have a, a relational form where you've like, got a drop down of, of other records and stuff. Super simple to like um, to query another uh, collection and bring it, bring that in as a drop down. Um, you just got to know when to use it and when not to. Cool. Thank you, Ben. <laughs>